Bienvenidos on Legends of the Hidden Agenda. I, Grimith, will be your guide through this political simulation, although, as I haven't played this game since the 90s, I don't think I'll be much of a guide. Ah, hell with it. I'm sure prior knowledge ain't important. Let's get on with it. In Hidden Agenda, we play as the newly elected president... Oh, I forgot I can't use the mouse. <laughs> We're off to a great start. We play as the newly elected president of Chimerica, a fictitious name created to represent an amalgamation of several Central American nations. In a post-revolutionary environment, we must guide our country to rebuild and to thrive. We have three years. On the off chance I piss off someone during that time frame, the game may end a little prematurely. Oh, and when I say off chance, I mean extremely likely, but I'm okay with that. This is really a virgin exploration for me, where I'm not corrupted by the taint of game mechanics. YouTube, your advice can't help me now. So what do we got here? Congratulations, Presidente. With the completion of a formal signing-in ceremony, your term as Presidente of Chimerica will officially begin. Please sign the official form and get ready for your first press conference. All right. Now, name. For those of you who don't know how how naming structures work in Spanish-speaking countries, I actually think this help thing will tell you. That's right. In Spanish-speaking cultures, this is either your mother's maiden name or your husband's name preceded by D. Marco de Alvarez or something. I don't know. <laughs> Although, having a female with her first name, Marco, might be a little weird. Whatever. So, obviously my whole, like, spiel like Grim of Jack Reaver won't exactly work, because Jack's not really a middle name. So, uh, President Day Jack just doesn't work. So, uh... I think I'm going to go with uh, the Legends of the Hidden Agenda theme. And, uh, Kirk Olmec Fog. <laughs> that will suffice. A crowd of reporters presses toward you. President A. Olmec, one calls. There has been much talk recently of the need for justice. Which of these would be most important in achieving a more just society? What do you say, Helf? By answering these questions, you are setting goals for your administration. I say that in order to promote a more just society, we must ensure the free distribution of information. Another reporter pushes to the front and raises her hand. Everyone agrees that we must develop our nation's economy, but what should be the first priority of this development effort? In order to develop our nation's economy, we must first promote the growth of the economy. That sounds like political speak to me. A third reporter raises his hand. Thank you, Presidente. One more question. Which of the following will the old Olmec administration work hardest to improve? Infrastructure, services for the city dwellers, or living standards of the rural poor. We will promote and grow our city's infrastructure so future administrations uh, will uh, have better tools to improve the livelihoods of our people. Thank you, President Day. We look forward to seeing you again after you have appointed, appointed the ministers of your cabinet. In the first year of your presidency, the harvest season ends and the dry season begins. So, three years... They're divided, I think, into like three seasons each, and you've got like four weeks in each season, I think. I read the manual only like a few days ago, and I've already forgotten. Crap. Whatever. <laughs> I was trying to brush up my knowledge of the game. Their reference manual uh, also helps and provides like a huge lengthy history of Chimerica and the whole economic things and what the fuck's going on here. Of course, I'm not giving you any of that information, so... Ah. <laughs> That's what you get for not owning ancient games in their manuals. <laughs> so, uh, the, uh, the reporters recommended that we take our first step, our first step being to uh, hire some, well, not hire, but, you know, appoint some ministers to uh, operate in our cabinet, our El Presidente cabinet, who will assist us in implementing our changes to improve Chimerica. Now, I think you can go through the game without appointing ministers, but their aid can be very useful, particularly in upfront confrontations. Or I could completely misremember that. 
Let's consult all of our options here. Well, all the options on the desk. Help first. This is your office in the National Palace. Use the desk icon to visit different parts of the game. Contacts review the biographies of Junta members and appoint the ministers of your cabinet. Junta, Junta... I mean, that's a Spanish word, but it's kind of been anglicized enough that I think either pronunciation is acceptable at this point, but I'm going to stick with Junta, because, you know, I'm in Chimerica, and fuck it. I'm old mech, bitch. Don't you fucking question me. Consultations? We could consult with our ministers here if we actually had any. El in granos confiamos agricultura. Oh, fuck. It's been almost a year since I've been to Puerto Rico. Uh, any uh, help that I had there on the Spanish front? I took Spanish in high school, too. And I, I had some folks who spoke Spanish in college. Ah, it's all gone now. De muchos al uno asuntos internos. All right, it's enough. <laughs> I just looked at the bottom two boxes. <laughs> ah, we're good. <laughs> so we could consult with our ministers, but we don't have any ministers. All right, that's enough. Reliving our uh, our Spanish roots, our Hispanic roots. Here we could uh, appoint some ministers from the three parties involved. Parties involved in our junta, as the game will tell you. And in encounters, we can talk to a lot of people. As the game will say, if a button is dim, that character either is has already met with you once this season, is no longer living, has fled the country, or has taken up arms against your government. Oh goody. That sounds promising. Then we have a log book. Ah, the captain's log. El Presidente's log. And reports. We can get some press digest. The date. Year one. Week zero of the dry season. Chimerica ahora. The journal of stability, honor, and dignity. The new Presidente faces the deteriorating economic situation, a splintered military, shortages of food, and a potential power vacuum now that the strong hand of Farsante no longer guides the nation. Searching for historical parallels, one might best compare the current situation to the fall of Haitian despo Baby Doc Duvalier in 1987. El Independiente. New journalism for the new Chimerica. Speculation centers today on the thoughts and aspirations of one individual. In 1959, when Fidel Castro overthrew the Cuban dictator Batista, no one knew if he would turn out to be a true revolutionary or a weak-willed reformer. <laughs> Sorry, whenever I, I, I think of the name Batista. I... <laughs> right, sorry. Uh, it'd be a true revolutionary or a weak-willed reformer. Today, no one can say with certainty what leadership the nation can expect from this old hack. <laughs> In order to earn the wealth of this government, you must first complete the Shrine of the Silver Monkey. <laughs> edition Mondial. World Edition? France in the world, the world in France. Not since... Juan José Arevalo returned from exile to lead Guatemala in 1944. After the fall, the dictator Yubico has a civilian leader so little known come to play such a crucial role in the region's politics as Kirk Olmec Fogg does today. USA Yesterday. All the news the nation needs, only 35 cents. The streets of... Oh, fuck. <laughs> became one endless parade as enthusiastic crowds demonstrated their hopes for the future by honking horns, waving banners, and joyfully traipsing through the city. The spontaneous burst of affection reminded an observer of the enthusiasm Corazon Aquino met once Ferdinand Marcos had finally left the Philippines. Cool story. We have no reports. Here are progress charts. We've made no progress, so it doesn't matter. Okie dokie. Let us... Hire some dude mins. Man dudes. Party dossiers. So, three parties. Let's consult Christian Reform first. I think I'm going to go through all the dossiers before I make my selections. Or I might change my mind in the middle of the process. Might be like bored now. We'll see. 
Formed in the 1940s as a popular alternative, Christian reform had its heyday during the short-lived reformist government of Leonard Flores. Long the only tolerated opposition party, it managed to avoid banishment even during the worst of the dictator's excesses. Its appeal is strongest among the small urban middle class, though it is also favored by elements of the coffee producers and the leadership of the Catholic Church. This sounds like one of those moderate groups that, you know, Christian reforms, like, ah, fuck political sides. Jesus is where it's at, man. <laughs> and apparently, you know, it was the only opposition party in existence during the, uh, the reign of the, uh, the dictator man, Farsante, whom we replaced. So, first off... Ignacio Nunez? I'm gonna presume that's supposed to be an in with one of those goddamn tildes on top of it. I've already forgotten my language. All of my Spanish teachers would be upset at me. <laughs> La Ranera. Okay, let's check, take a look at you. Christian Reform, the son of a well-known vofuck lawyer, earned degrees from the University of Mexico and the London School of Economics before entering politics, gradually became more outspoken against the Farsante dictatorship, but strongly opposed attempting to solve the country's problems with violence. Nevertheless, endured several periods of house arrest and a long period in exile after receiving death threats. 43 years old, in the several books he has authored, he has called for regaining the campesinos' trust through the limited land that I... Thrust? I don't need to roll my fucking R in a goddamn English word. Come on now. Pragmatic recognition of the political power of the military, timely preparation for elections, and improving ties with neighbors in Europe. Okay. I gotta admit, you sound kind of pointless, bro. Liliana Ortiz Lanza. Maybe I should appoint people who confuse me. <laughs> Christian Reform. A former teacher, mother of four, and member of the board of trustees of several social service agencies. Widow of Armando Lanza, popular university professor, politician, and critic of the Farsantes, whose assassination of the last year of the dictatorship helped spark the dictator's final fall from power. Still carries the banner of her outspoken and influential husband, but has now become an important figure in her own right. 47 years old, recent statements indicate her support for assistance to needy farmers, civilian control over the military, increased funding for education and health care, and stable relations with all countries. It's worth noting that uh, there are only three people in each political party, but four total uh, minister positions. So you're going to have to have an odd man out here, at least one from a different party, unless you don't even appoint ministers at all. And Francisco Ferrante Oberon. Christian reform. Grew up in Ofuck. Family owns the Plume Serpent Rum Distillery. Oh my! Opted to leave the family business to his brother and take a position with the party. Regarded as the consummate beyond behind the scenes player, preferring to work through others rather than seek the limelight himself. Widely respected for his abilities as a negotiator. 52 years old, when the dust settles, Ferrante is usually found on the side of measures to increase the production of export crops, careful balance of the two newly merged military forces, protection of the rights of individuals, and stronger relations with major trading partners. I see. What about national liberation? Labeled as a... Labeled... Excuse me. <clears throat> labeled an illegal criminal association by the dictatorship. The perseverance of the National Liberation Front in the face of brutal persecution put it in the forefront of the revolutionary movement. Some National Liberation Party leaders consider themselves Marxists. For others, ideas about social change are inspired. Social change are inspired by the interpretation of the Gospels, known as liberation theology. Speaks for the large population of rural poor. Gloria Jimenez, Moon speak. <laughs> Fleming. National Liberation, daughter of a doctor, professor of sociology, sociology at the National University of Chimerica, published a book-length analysis of the Chimerican peasantry, contributing evidence. I'm trying to be all fucking weird with my, my my voice, and it's just not working. Contributing editor of the French Marxist journal Dialogue uh, Dialectique, forced to go underground when the university shut down by the Fersante Guard. Subcommander of an important raid on Guardia headquarters, which gave her prominence in the growing revolt. 
only 36 years old. In her articles and books, she has advocated forceful land reform aimed at helping the landless, bringing army officers guilty of human rights abuses to justice increased attention to the health care needs of the poor, and closer relations with socialist nations. She sounds a little too radical for me, uh, for what we're trying to do here. In order for us to survive, I imagine we're going to have to be moderate. When you make a compromise and piss everyone off, <laughs> hopefully the process of pissing everyone off, you manage to keep enough people happy that... Well, yeah, also, I gotta... Stop bleeding so close to my desk because I'm fucking knocking my damn. Whatever, it's not important. I'm just making noise. That's what I'm always doing. Julio Olivares Las Casas. National Liberation grew up in a well to do family since taking his vows has been a tireless advocate for the rights of the poor. Gave refu refuge to the underground opposition during the insurrection. Narrowly escaped arrest on numerous occasions. A well known writer and exponent of liberation theology. After admonishment from the Vatican against direct involvement in political affairs, let the Society of Jesus in order to devote his full energies to the services of my people. 39 years old, in his writings and sermons he has called for sweeping land reform to help the poorest Chimericans to help themselves, curbing the abuse of power of the military, a nationwide campaign to teach the poor to read, and reducing dependency on larger nations. Hmm. Manuel Calderon Iglesias National Liberation, Comandante of the Guerrilla Forces, led several of the most important victories of the insurrection, moved to the capital at a young age from a rural village, became active in the resistance while still a teenager, jailed and tortured repeatedly by the Farsante dictatorship, including a four-year stint in Toluco prison, known as one of the most level-headed and pragmatic of the revolutionary leaders, 34 years old, and clandestine radio addresses during the insurrection at Tapo Farsante, Comandante Calderon called for sweeping land reform to share wealth and power with the poorest Chi Americans, integration of the revolutionary army with progressive elements of the old army, promotion of a nationalist ideology, and non-alignment in foreign affairs. I, I guess if I have to pick one, he'd definitely be it. I mean, for all intents and purposes, he appears to sound like Captain Badass, and I would very much like to have Captain Badass on my side. I'll keep you in mind, Manuel. Keep you in mind. Finally, we have Popular Stability. I believe I can pull out a snooty voice for this. Formed during the last years of dictatorship by landowners industrialists, fed up with the self-aggrandizement of the ruling family, popular stability has its roots in the old conservative party of Emilio Rosario. The party is supported by those army leaders who did not flee with Farsante, the cotton-growing elite, and by many less privileged Chai Americans, whose fortunes nevertheless depend on these powerful interests. Bernardo Whitmire Alvar Alvarado I can't do the snooty voice and fucking do these goddamn names at the same time, it doesn't work. Popular stability, with financial backing from his family, started a successful automobile import business. When the dictator's cousin insisted on becoming a partner in his enterprise, courageously, some say foolishly objected. Subsequently forced out of business, after undergoing conversion to an, evan to an in evangelical Protestant sect, entered politics as a spokesman for free trade and individual liberties. 47 years old, in speeches and interviews, he's spoken out in favor of encouragement of investment in large-scale mechanized agricultural projects, use of the military to reestablish order, investment of all restraints on trade and investment, close ties to the United States and other Western nations. Antonio Alejos Espinales. Popular stability. Among the more independent minded of current army generals, grew up in a well to do family of coffee producers. Trained long ago at West Point, in his younger days regarded as ablest field commander in the army. During the insurrection, led a faction of the military that broke with Farsante at a crucial juncture, effectively sealing the dictator's fate. 56 years old. From statements made over the years, his priorities are believed to be modernization of methods of export agricultural production, increased military preparedness through the United States aid and training, elimination of government, governmental corruption, 
and maintenance of close ties to the United States. Mm, well, as much as I might want to say fuck you to the United States, the problem with the United States is that the United States does whatever the fuck it goddamn wants over this fucking section of the world. It's been that way for a long time, ever since uh, fucking United States gave the fuck you finger to uh, <laughs> the fuck you fingers instead of the middle finger. Yes, special finger in the human uh, human anatomy devoted to that. Uh, the Monroe Doctrine basically saying, LOL, we do whatever we want over here, you stay out of our affairs, and uh, European powers didn't have to honor that. What the hell do the United States know? But they all fell in line, and... Uh, United States has pretty much had free reign over here, and whenever it became a superpower, that it's really had free reign over here. You know, having... It's hard telling. I certainly... I certainly can't even begin to fathom all the various things that the United States... interests may have done in the pursuit of... keeping this nation safe. <laughs> Consult your history book. So it's kind of inescapable, I guess. I mean, even if you ally with communism and Soviet Union, it's it's pretty rough going. <laughs> Just ask Cuba. Francisco Rosario Rosanes. You know, I was about to say that I'd like to stay away from political arguments and discussions, but then I realized what the fuck I was playing. Might be inescapable. Shit. I should go back to Liberal Crime Squad. <laughs> Popular stability. Scion of one of the one of the wealthiest families of Chimerica. Has extensive holdings in cotton and cattle. Grandson of Emilio Rosario, a long ruling president day overthrown in a 1948 coup. Excuse me. Outspoken, temperamental, and ambitious. Eager to resume the family tradition of service and power. 38 years old. The Rosarios have long advocated encouraging direct foreign investment in agriculture, strengthening of armed forces but without excessive foreign assistance, measures to stimulate industry and maintain maintenance of close ties to the United States. And you look like a jackass. <laughs> fucking douchebag right there. Francisco Rosario Rosares. Yeah, fuck you. So, the only person that I feel like most comfortable with first off is Manuel here. We're going to go ahead and appoint him to... I like the idea of putting him as defense minister. I welcome this new opportunity to serve my country with a deep sense of humility. I will endeavor to prove myself equal to the task. I don't know why Grimace is making me sound like this, but I'll roll with it. <laughs> good, 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 good. All right. Now who's next? Let's go back to party dossiers. Christian reform. I don't think I liked you too much. Yeah. Liana, assistance to needy farmers, civilian control over the military. Increase funding for education and health care. That sounds like I might put you as uh, Minister of the Interior. And measures to increase the stronger relations with trading partners. What about you? Through limited land reform. Timely preparation for elections? What the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> What does that mean? <laughs> that sounds like political speak to me. Congratulations, you are now internal affairs. <laughs> Alright. I think I'll keep the, the rest of my appointings, uh, appointments here through um, the Christian Reform Party. I guess we you know we're gonna we're not gonna go too radical in one direction or the other. We'll stick to, we'll try to toe that line, and we'll either appease everyone just enough or piss off everyone just enough. Trying to survive my appointment of government here. Come on, bros. <laughs> Come on, broskies. Mm, 
Let's go ahead and appoint you to increase funding for education and healthcare. Sounds good to me. You are the Eternal Affairs Minister. We have come a long way, but a hard road still stretches out before us. Let us move forward with boldness and decision. Sounds good to me. Ignacio! Improving ties with neighbors in Europe? That sounds good to me. External Affairs Minister. Though we will inevitably have our differences, President Day, on certain details of policy, I trust that our mutual love for this great country of ours will serve to guide us through the difficult days of trial and compromise ahead. Oh, you are good! You, you are good with your political speak there! <laughs> you are good, sir! And Francisco here, measures to increase the production of export crops. Totally help our economy. I like the sound of that. Agriculture minister. Okay, America needs us, President Day. Let us work together to make our land a place of prosperity, peace, and hope. Fantastic. Can I save the game? Let's call this Beginning Ha. Or LGWI 1 dot ha. Can I do that? I think I did it. Okay, okay. I think I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Not a whole lot of excitement, or but you know, come on. This is an ancient political simulation. There's not going to be a whole lot of excitement.